everybody. Um, I'm Sarah from SewingWithSarah.com and I'm here today. I'm doing a guest post for Emily of Life So Savory. So I'm excited to be posting for her. Thank you for having me. Um, and I'm really excited to share with you a pattern mashup that I created this week um, from um, two of my favorite patterns, the Centerfield Raglan and the um, Scarlet Swing Dress from Green Style Creations. I was never a huge fan of the um, swing dress kind of phenomenon, um, but then I, the other day I saw a neighbor wearing one and I thought, wow, that looks really cute. Um, hers was LuLaRoe, but I knew that I could improve on that. So um, I decided to uh, do like a little mashup. Um, I have a link um, to my blog post and to the blog post on Green Style where there's a tutorial. There's also an exclusive discount code, and if you sew along with me today and watch this video and leave a comment on the Green Style Creations Facebook page, um, I'm about to share it over there, um, you'd be entered to win a pattern prize as well. So just let me take a second and, and share this over there, and then I'll get going. Okay, you have to bear with me for a minute. I'm new to some of this live video stuff. Just pulling it up here. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So I'm sharing it to a couple of places. love when I create a new um, mashup, a new pattern mashup, because it just kind of shows the versatility of a pattern. Um, you know, patterns of when I was just a beginning sewer, I didn't really, you know, I just kind of sewed the patterns exactly the way that they were. Um, I didn't make any modifications, I didn't make any changes, I stuck to the instructions like glue, and um, that was great for learning, um, but as I, you know, get more experience and feel more comfortable with patterns, I start to mash them up and mix things around and that makes them even more exciting. Um, so, I'm excited to share that with you. And I'm gonna share it one more place and then we'll get started. love to hear where all of you guys are coming from today. So if you are watching from somewhere, please let me know. I'd love to see, I'd love to see sewers all over the world. Sometimes it feels like we're so isolated. Um, I don't really know anyone locally that sews, and so it's always fun to, to kind of see where everybody comes from. So I really enjoy doing that. Um, so that's what I love to do. So, okay. And we have my husband here for at least a little bit of it as my cameraman. Honey, are you sharing that to my, my page? No. Oh. Thank you. Okay, so I've got my fabric laid out here and I've got my pattern pieces. And if you want to see how to do the mashup, um, you can visit the blog post that I've linked. But essentially, um, you're going to take the Scarlet Swing Dress pattern and you're going to take the Centerfield Raglan pattern and you're going to match them up at the bottom of the arm here. And then you're just gonna trace that out using the side seam of the center feet or the, the scarlet swing and the shoulder and the neckline of the center field raglan. So I've got some jersey here. Um, it's kind of a, a flowy jersey that I picked up at a fabric swap meet in San Diego in National City when we were visiting earlier this summer. Um, I've actually seen this fabric over at So So English um, so I think that they have it and it's just, it's really pretty, it's just kind of floral and camo. So, um, camo is another thing that I wasn't sure that I was on board with as a trend until I started seeing it mixed with florals and then I'm a sucker for a good floral. So I couldn't resist. So anyway, the first thing that I'm going to do is just make sure that my knit is on grain and I have a blog post on this, um, on the link to the tips and tutorials on my webpage, on my, um, on my blog, I have a, a post on how to find the grain line on knit because that's something that 
is important, um, especially for a longer dress like this. You don't want it to be twisting. Um, I'm going to endeavor to get this out of a yard, which is what I've got. I don't know what I was thinking, um, buying only a yard. But if I can't do it, that's okay because I have some coordinating dry blend from Knit Pop that I might use as well. Um, I trace all my pattern pieces onto either this medical tracing paper, medical exam paper, or onto a, um, like a Swedish tracing paper. So it just depends on what I want to use it for and how long I want to keep it. But since this was a pattern hack, I traced it onto my medical exam paper and it's, that's what I'm using so that I don't have to mess up my original pattern. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that down. Now I am short, <laughs> so I'm cutting the shortest uh, size here. You may not be able to get it out of a yard if you're taller than I am. Um, green style drafts for a height of 5'7", so if you, you know, I'm 5'2", I'm so I, I definitely tend to, you know, make the shorter length option. Um, so if you're making the longer length option, it might be harder to get it out of, out of a yard. But first I'm cutting out the back here. rotary cutter when I do my knits, even my wovens too usually. I use a rotary cutter. It's just a fast and easy, easy way to cut something out. Makes for a nice clean cut. So there I've got the back there. Now I've got to cut the front and kind of shift my fabric around a little bit. Good thing this is a raglan because that's going to hopefully enable me to get it all out of this yard. So. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, this cutting mat really revolutionized uh, my sewing when I got this large cutting mat. Definitely uh, enabled me to cut out larger pieces of fabric on the time at a time without having to, you know, get on my hands and knees with the, on the floor or something, which is not fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just have to kind of readjust a little bit. I think realizing that the yard that I've got is not very straight. So actually I might have to switch this around a little bit because I thought that I could fit this in here but they seem to have not really given me a full yard of fabric, so I will go to plan B here. Fortunately, I always have a plan B, so if you want to swivel around and see, I'll show you my fabric closet here. Um, this is where I keep my fabric, and actually just the only reason I'm showing you this is because I just went through and reorganized everything. So that was fortunate, or else it might be kind of embarrassing. So I also had this nice rayon spandex earmarked for this pattern. I'm going to save that other one. I'll probably order another yard of it from So So English <laughs> since I can't go back to San Diego right now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this out of, out of here because I've got two yards of it. So I know that'll be enough. Again, just the same thing, I'm gonna lay it out. Okay. And this one is a, a nice weight for the warm weather that we're still having. I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods, but where I am, it's still pretty hot. It's probably about, I don't know, 90s, 100s still. <laughs> So a nice lightweight rayon spandex will be very comfortable. Okay. The thing with rayon spandex is that if any of it is really kind of hanging over the edge of your cutting mat, it can stretch out. So I always like to make sure that that's not happening. Because sometimes, once I cut a skirt and it was out of rayon 
spandex and it was kind of hanging over the edge and I thought that would be okay. <laughs> and then I realized after I cut it that it kind of bounced back. It had really gotten shorter. So that was unfortunate. So this set up here. Sorry, the cutting part's taking so long. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the front. Now I did, if you look at my blog post, the one that I uh, posted there, I did adjust the neckline on that one. Um, my baby is one and a half and she is still nursing. Um, so, you know, creating nursing and friendly clothes is something that I am always on the lookout to do. And when you buy them in the store, they're very expensive. So I do tend to cut a lower neckline. Um, sometimes that's something I do kind of after the fact. I tr I'll try it on before I apply the neckband and see how that, how that feels and what length I want to have it. Um, and I would recommend doing that anyway. Anytime you're doing kind of a pattern mash, it's a good idea to just try it on before you do something a little bit more permanent, like apply a neckline, a neckband. So I'm going to really cut the back here. I use these little Dritz sewing pattern weights. They're kind of like little mini bean bags and these metal washers um, to stabilize my fabric as I cut. Just kind of cut that, cut that out of the way. Save that scrap for something. My last sew along I was reminded by one of the people that I should not ever waste fabric. I am going to definitely do my best to recycle my scraps. Okay. This is a really big cut, so it takes a little rearranging. And I like having the cutting mat too because then I can kind of arrange the fold line along one of the lines on my cutting mat and make sure that I'm cutting straight. So, just take a look and make sure it's on the grain there. Make sure I don't have any fabric distortion going on here. Okay. And then, thank you, the back pattern piece. just a tiny bit more. This is really wide. There's a lot of good swing in this, which with the rayon spandex will have a really beautiful drape. The last one I did, the one that's on my blog, is out of brush poly, which was really nice. Um, it can be a tad bit warm in our weather right now, um, but it's going to be perfect, perfect for fall. Rearrange that a little bit. Fabric really wants to scrunch off the grain. So if you're curious, I think, sometimes I lose track of my fabric, but I believe that this one came from Pretty Posh Prints. Okay, so that's much better. Now I've got it wide enough. And I've been looking for a little swing dress pattern for my daughter. I'd love it if Greenstyle made one, um, but I don't think that's on the docket for them right now. Um, so I think that it would be cute to have us match, so that may be what I'd do with some of my scraps. Although, I put on something in the morning, she puts on the same dress, and then by noon, you know, she's spit up on it or, you know, gotten animal cracker goo all over it. So. She has to change and we no longer match, but if we take a picture, at least it's documented. <laughs> okay. So, that cut out. So that I've got the front and the back now. Now I 
just need to do my sleeves. using the short sleeve. The center field raglan also comes with a long sleeve and then there's some add-ons you could get to it for it that would look really cute too. Okay, I'll make sure to flip it over so it's mirrored. This isn't a directional print so I'm going to save fabric by flipping my, uh, oh, it looks like I need to by flipping my pattern piece over. This, if this was a directional print, you would not want to do this because something would end up upside down. But I think for the sleeves, you're not going to be able to tell with these flowers, whether it's right side up or upside down. typically do that later because I like to measure my own neckbands based on you know what the depth of the neckline ends up being so there's my giant scrap of that and I've got my pattern pieces it's pretty simple really just just three pieces which is nice so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the front, the front of my dress here and I'm gonna adjust that neckline while it's nicely folded in half. I don't wanna mess with the uh, sleeve at all, so I'm gonna make sure that I, I don't affect that, but I'm just gonna lower that a bit. And I just kind of eyeball it, and then I hold it up to myself, and think about you know whether that's low enough. Um, you know, keeping in mind that the sleeve is gonna form kind of part of your your neckline. And because I'm gonna add a band to it, I think I do want it just a little bit lower. My baby does not have tolerance these days for very much time in between when she wants to nurse and when the nursing needs to happen. So. a better depth here. Yeah. Let's see. I'm not quite all the way at the edge here. Okay. So I think that'll be good. Rayon spandex is pretty stretchy, so I think that'll be a good uh, depth for the neckline. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to take one of my sleeve pieces. You want to make sure when you're sewing a raglan that you always are aware of which is the front sleeve and which is the back. The back is always going to be longer than the front. So this is the shorter side, so that's going to go right sides together with one of my front pieces here. And I use clips and pins equally, it just kind of depends on what I'm doing and what I've gotten got handy in the moment. I'm going to give it a couple clips, it's a pretty short seam. but. Okay, I'm going to take the other side and clip it on right sides together. Okay, you shouldn't really have to stretch either one of these at all. It should just pretty much be exactly the same length and the same length. I'm going to head over to my serger and since we switched fabric here, now you'll notice I have two sergers. Very fortunate. That's kind of the result of a 
surge or failure. Um, one of them died last Christmas when I was in the middle of a bunch of Christmas pajamas and then got fixed. So I had ordered another one thinking that it wasn't going to be able to be fixed and then it was, so I ended up with two. Similar thing happened to me with a hamster when I was a kid, but that's not quite as happy of a story. Um, so, anyway, so now I'm gonna just surge them together. So it's really nice to have two surger, it just makes it a lot faster. I typically keep one threaded with light thread and one threaded with dark thread. have something that looks like this now. Now we need to sew those onto the back. So I'm just gonna take the back the dress and the back part of the sleeve and put those together. So you're gonna be creating kind of a tube here. side of the sleeve just goes to the other end. Again, that back seam is going to be a lot longer. take that over and I've got those pinned together here. So it'll end up being a circle. Surge that together. run my fingers along the edge that's about to go under the knife and the serger so that I'm making sure that there's no extra fabric folded up under there. I've had that happen one too many times um, where there's there's extra that got folded that wasn't supposed to be in there and then you've cut a hole in part of the front or the back and that's so frustrating. So. seams. Now often I'll iron them. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to press them. Rayon spandex and pressing it doesn't really like to be pressed much. Um, so I'll do it sometimes on like a, a wool or a silk setting. Um, but honestly I find that with rayon spandex it, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. I might be kind of committing like fabric sacrilege here. But um, so it doesn't always happen. Now what I do care a lot about, for whatever reason, is that these armpit seams are messed up, are matched up. 
really bugs me when I, that's one of the first things I do when I go shopping at a mall, is I look at the armpit seams. And sometimes those armpit seams are off and that just drives me nuts. So I always use a little pin when I'm matching this up because what you're gonna do now is you're gonna surge the arm and all the way down the side of the dress. So if you don't count the neckband, I mean, this dress has, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six seams. That's pretty quick. Um, that's, that's pretty much as good as it gets <laughs> in clo clothing manufacturing. Um, so I just kind of put my, my pin at that seam line and I adjust it to make sure that those armpit seams are going to match up. Not that anybody but me is going to know, but that's just, that's just the perfectionist in me. So I'm just going to go down. Now because it has this great long side seam that you're sewing all at once, as you attach the leaves flat, um, after you sew these side seams is a great point to try on your dress and make sure that it's fitting the way you want. If it's, I mean, if it's too tight, there's not a ton that you could do about that. You could add in a stripe along the side or something. Um, but if it's too loose, you can take it in in certain places so that it has you know, the amount of fit that you want. So for example, I learned when I made my first one, and I imagine this will be especially true in a rayon spandex, that I actually wanted to use a bigger seam allowance along the bust um, and a little bit less at the hem because that will you know, give me the, the fit and flare look that I'm, that I'm going for. I don't want to look like I'm wearing like a tent, so it has to be fitted somewhere. Uh, so I found that that was helpful for me um, because I know that, and I'm sewing this live. I'm not going to try it on for you today. Um, but that's something that I would recommend doing. Another thing that you could do would be to baste it, too. You know, just use a long length stitch on your sewing machine and baste it closed, and then try it on and see how that feels. That's another great way to assess whether you're going to like the way that it fits. Let's see. Maybe Sarah. Yeah, I mean, Sarah, you can find the link uh, in the comments at the top, so I'd love for you to, to check this out. Um, <laughs> Donna, you always check the armpit seams, too. I'm so glad I am not the only one. I thought I was kind of a weirdo, but um, it's those things that you learn, you know, when, you, when you're when you sewing and you know how clothes are manufactured and you know what's important to you and what's, you know, what is kind of a, a sign of something being well made, then you start to take a more critical look some of those ready-to-wear clothes that you have and in a lot of cases you're going to find that they're not nearly as well constructed as your self-made garments. I know we're kind of hard on ourselves sometimes or at least I can be. Um, I see all the flaws and the things that I've made but when I compare them to something from Forever 21 I realize hey I did actually a pretty good job. So I'm going to go over to the serger now and I'm going to serge those side seams. seam so I remove the pen it's looking good make sure that continues to match up. adjusting it as I go along.
matched up at the hem, which is always a good sign. Okay, so got one long side seam sewn there. I'm gonna flip it over and move on to the next one. Okay, I'm gonna up the differential feet a bit. When your seams look wavy, you may need to adjust the differential feed, and I think I had this set for a woven the last time I was using it, which explains why I was doing that. It's not enough to cause a problem, but I just noticed it. people wear this style belted. I've seen them, you know, wear it just loose with a long necklace, which is kind of my preference. I think it looks really cute with boots um, in the fall and the winter, or with some cute strappy sandals. So I find that this is, with these really long seams, this is one place where it's really important to pin your fabric. That you don't end up at the bottom with them kind of off. Okay, so there it's starting to look a bit like a dress. That's always good. I'm going to go ahead and press this just a little bit on the wrong side. Like you said, rayon spandex tends to get all shiny if you press it from the right side, but do a little pressing here from the right, or from the wrong side, just that one long seam. And if you want to press your shoulder seams, you can still do that. Um, just want to make sure that the top and the bottom are pressed the same way. I usually press my sleeve seams to the back. Um, I've heard some people that say that they should really be pressed toward the sleeve. So I think you gotta do what works for you. Um, most important thing I would think is just to be consistent in the way that you do it for both sides. And I noticed, if I take a look at this, that this other arm needs to be sewn a little deeper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before I move on. Okay, there's a spot where my seam allowance kind of slipped out a little bit, so. It's all right now, that's much better. dress and you know, I could I'm gonna slip it on over the shirt if I wanted to but I'm pretty confident in the way that it fits because I made the other one so now what I need to do is I need to do the neck band before I hem it um, and so I'm gonna grab my extra fabric over here and I'm gonna grab my measuring tape because like I said I, I tend to measure my neck bands um, rather than just going by what's in the pattern because your fabric is going to vary, you know, I mean, the pattern is kind of designed for a standard. And if your fabric is stretchier than that, or less stretchy than that, you're going to need to make adjustments. So, I'm going to grab my tape measure, and I'm going to go, and the other thing is, is I lowered the neckline. So, I'm going to go along the seam line. Um, you don't want to go right along the edge, you want to go around along the seam line, and I'm going to measure with my tape measure, the length of that seam line. It's not an exact science, but I'm just gonna do my best to be accurate here. Okay, so I've got 
26.25 inches. So I'm going to open the calculator on my computer because I don't like to do math if I can avoid it. Don't tell my kids that. I'm homeschooling them and I want them to love math. Okay, so 26.25 um, and I'm going to multiply it by 0.75 because this is a very stretchy rayon spandex. When I did my brush poly version, I did 80%, but this is very stretchy. So I'm gonna use 75% so that it lays flat. If you don't stretch the neckband enough, it's gonna kind of flop open a little bit, not really hug your chest the way that it needs to. Um, if you stretch it too much, it's gonna get gathers. So you kind of wanna find a happy middle. And then I'm gonna add in a half an inch for a seam allowance and I get 20.18. So I'm gonna go back to my fabric here. Of course, you wanna cut this along the greatest stretch. So I have to find a spot that's wide enough. Okay. So, so 20.18, and I'm gonna cut mine on the fold just because that makes my life easier. So 10.09 is half of that. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to make sure that my fold line is even and that I'm not stretching out my fabric as I go. I'm gonna grab my quilting ruler here. This thing is really useful. And I'm gonna line it up here, make sure that that's straight. inches wide. That's another thing that you can vary according to your preference, what you like the best. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold it right sides together. I have a video on my blog about attaching things flat versus in the round. This is attaching it in the round. Um, and I actually like, I have another little tip. I like sewing this with my sewing machine because if I do that, then I can press these seams open and they're gonna lay flatter. Um, if you sew it with your serger, it's gonna be kind of a bump there. So I prefer to do it with my sewing machine. So I'm gonna grab some thread that matches, so I'm not doing it in white because that wouldn't look as nice. Just recently got my sewing machine back. It had broken due to lack of maintenance, which I felt very guilty about. Um, I have a blog post on that too. What happened to me and how you can avoid it. Proper maintenance of your sewing machine, your serger. Don't forget. Or you'll be stuck up a creek like I was. So I'm very happy to have her back. Call her Ashley and I missed her. I spend more time with her than I do with my actual friends. <laughs> Sometimes, anyway. Okay. Not because I don't love them, but because Ashley's willing to hang out with me at midnight. Okay, so I'm going to sew the seam here. Okay. And I already do have a stretch needle in here. Looks like it's kind of catching a little bit anyway. Let's see what's going on. We're on. Okay. Alright. Sorry about that. Lost you for a second, but we're back. So I'm just sewing that neck band with my sewing machine because it tends to look nicer. trim some of those extra threads that I have going on here. I'm all over the place right now. Okay. And I'm 
going to press that open. And then I'm going to press it in half because we're going to be folding it wrong sides together and serging it onto the neckline of the dress. This is one part where I'm not quite as anxious about pressing my own spandex because it's not against a seam line. That shininess seems to happen the most when it's against a seam line and the heat is too high. So, got that. Okay. All right, so now I've got my neckband. The next part is just to quarter it is something that I read in a pattern when I was a beginner and I couldn't for the life of me figure out that they meant quarter it. Like how would I do that? Um, but this is how you do it. And taking the front, the back where that seam line is, fold it in half, put a pin in the opposite side so that's going to be the center front. Then I'm going to match up those pins and put a pin in each side. And then I'm going to take my dress and I'm going to find the center back by folding the two back shoulder seams together and I'm going to put a pin in there and then I'm going to put the front shoulder seams together and I'm going to put a pin in my center front and then I'm going to match up those two pins and that's going to be the equal distance between the front and the back. It is not necessarily your shoulder seams, especially in a raglan, but even in a, in a top with like a regular sleeve, it's not necessarily your shoulder seams. It's usually a little bit in front of your shoulder seams. So you wanna be stretching that evenly. Okay, so now it's pretty simple. I just match up those seams. So center front to center front, the raw edges meeting so you should have three raw edges you could also do a binding this is a band you could do a binding if you wanted to um, but rayon spandex and binding don't always go well together in my experience so I do that first one and I check it I'm gonna stretch it okay that feels like enough stretch that's something that you kind of will get the feel for as you do this more about whether that, that feels like an appropriate amount of stretch for your fabric. It's not gonna cause it to gather. Um, you want it to stretch a bit, but not to the max of the fabric. You don't wanna be stretching the band as much as humanly possible. Um, that would be too much stretching. So I'm just gonna match those points. And then sometimes I'll even go through, especially if I have a fabric that likes to roll, like tri-blend, Tri-blend is so rolly. If it's uh, gonna roll, then I'll put in an extra pin and kind of create eight pins. But this one, this fabric's being pretty well behaved, so I have confidence it's gonna be all right. So I'm just gonna go over to my serger. I'm gonna serge that on. You wanna be stretching the band only as you do that. Walk over here. like there's a little spot that I need to trim right there before I start surging. Um, how long have I been sewing? I have been sewing since my twins were two years old and they are almost seven. So for about five years, I really, really desperately needed a hobby when they were two. <laughs> and so um, I actually prayed about it and found this hobby and I am so grateful um, because it's really fun. So, yeah. So five years. When I was a little kid, I made a couple doll clothes, but I nothing consistent. All right, so I'm gonna search this on. Just make sure that that stays even. Stretching that 
shaking it just enough to accommodate that space. I'm just letting the serger feed the main fabric through and then the band is where I'm putting my stretch. In general, you want more of the stretch to be in the like curve of the neckline and a little bit less to be you near know, the sides and the back. I started. All right, so let's see how that went. Okay, so if you hold it up, you can see it doesn't look, doesn't look like it's gathered, but it doesn't look like oh, it's overly stretched either. So that's definitely a good, a good thing. Um, so now all we have to do is hem it, and that's then you have a dress. Um, again, at this point, you know, if I were making this dress for the first time, I would try it on and make sure that the length was good for me. Um, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and press up that hem. Now this is a lot of hem, so to make my life easier, I like to run a basting stitch with the sewing machine um, along that hemline so that I know where to fold it. Because I'll press it, but it's just easier to keep it in the right place. Um, the other thing that I do sometimes with rayon spandex is stabilize the edge with a um, like a knit stay tape. I like to use this stuff from So Keezy. Um, it just kind of, when I'm putting it through my cover stitch, the cover stitch just has an easier time with the rayon spandex if I do that. So what I usually do to see if that's necessary is I take a scrap of fabric um, and I run it through my cover stitch to see how it does. So we're losing our cameraman, but I'll, I'm gonna keep sewing. And, kind of see see what happens and I'll come back and show you if you can't see from over there um. okay so this is you can see that this is the cover stitch on the ram spandex and in this case it's not creating any tunneling tunneling would be if it were puffed up in between my two stitch lines and so it seems to actually be doing really well. So I'm really happy with that. That means that I don't have to do the knit stay tape, hopefully, this time. Um, so that's definitely makes it a little bit easier. But I am going to go over to the sewing machine and run my basting stitch around. And I'm actually going to bring my camera around. So I'm sorry if this makes you dizzy. Okay. So, I'm gonna go ahead and run that basting stitch. And a basting stitch is just a really long stitch length. My machine goes to five millimeters, so that's usually what I do. I don't back stitch, and I'm just go ahead and run that through. Now I do wanna make sure that my seams are getting pressed the right direction. This is the front of my dress, so I want my seam to be pressed toward the back. I'm going to move that seam down. And I do take out the spacing stitch when I'm done, but this just makes it easier when you have a material that doesn't press well or that for some reason you don't want to press. The basting stitch does a good job of marking it for you. Okay, again, I'm 
I'm just double checking to make sure that the front of my dress, I want the same press toward the back. Again, one of those nitpicky things, it isn't a big deal, but just makes me prouder of my finished product. going to switch over. I'm going to do the arms, which are much smaller. Easier to press, but... This just allows me to make sure that I'm having a nice straight hem. stitch and we'll hem it. Now, if you don't have a cover stitch, you can absolutely still be hemming. Um, you can use woolly nylon in, or the uh, maxi lock stretch would probably be better in the bobbin of your sewing machine. Um, to give it a little bit of extra give, you can use a zigzag stitch um, if you need it, that spot to be stretchy. So a cover stitch is definitely not necessary for hemming, but it does make it quick. Um, the other thing is, I've, I've heard people use their serger um, to hem something, and I actually have not tried that myself, but it sounds like it's kind of a cool technique. Okay, so I'm going to take my hem here, and I like to start at the back. So here's the back of my dress. I just like to start at the back and kind of near the side. Fold that up to where I want it, put it under my presser foot. And you want to try to get your hem, if you're using cover stitch, right up, up to that seam line. So make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay, looks like it's working out okay. All right. So as I go, I just fold under along that basting stitch. It seems to be working out okay, so it's a good sign. Yep, right along that line. So that's perfect. contrast color because I think that it's kind of fun. So I'm doing kind of a, a dark army green. I notice that on a lot of ready to wear they use a contrast color for their stitching. seams to be folding it up. I like to go a little slower so that it don't doesn't skip stitches.
before we started. Okay, now I need to lock my stitches. I'm going to do this by sweeping my scissors or my seam ripper underneath there, pulling the needle threads out, cut them, and then I pull the garment to the back. And that should create a little knot on the back. For extra security, I also tend to tie those threads together. Just because I hate it when my hems start unraveling, that's so irritating. So I tie them and you can clip that off. Okay, so now we've got one hemline. Um, now I'm going to do the other. I'm going to move you over just a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to hem the arms and then we're done with our dress. That's it. It's really pretty simple, um, which is what makes it such a satisfying project. I actually like to do this inside out because that way I fold it and make sure that my fold is staying where I want it to be. The last arm, and you want to make sure that you cut off that serger tail too if you've got one there. Turn this one inside out. And like to go over my original stitching just a bit. Okay, so got that one done. Cut off that serger tail. Tie off my threads. This is the part where I sometimes get overzealous and just skip these finishing touches because I'm excited, but they are important, so. Tie that off, cut it. These little snippers are actually not the best. They don't seem to be doing a very good job snipping. Let's see. Cut off my threads here. And then I would go through and remove those basting stitches. But essentially, you have your dress. So there we go. That is the green style center field scarlet swing. Move this up a little bit. Mashup. Um, I hope you've enjoyed um, this live. So thank you so much, Emily, for um, 
letting me have this guest spot to um, you know, do a post here. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you guys will check out Green Style Creations, their Facebook group. If you leave a comment there, I'll enter you to win um, one of these patterns for free, and I'll be choosing the winner this evening or tomorrow morning. And um, also visit my blog, uh, sewingwithsarah.com, and check out the other hacks and tutorials and makes that I've got on there. All right, have a good afternoon, everybody. Bye.